hey guys, welcome to the It's Show Business Podcast, where we talk about the business behind show business, a little bit of money, and mostly a fun conversation around things we like to talk about in entertainment. Tonight we have... Jessica Kelly. Who is... A talent manager. For? <laughs> Stand-up comedians. How fantastic. <laughs> And, uh, some and I'm an easy laugher. An easy, la- oh, I mean, come on, so perfect for stand-ups. Yeah, yeah. I guess way I- to make me feel awesome. <laughs> easy laugher. Hey, by the way, what you said, not funny. Me, it's just yeah. all. It's really me. Oh, go. So you're the best audience member. I am. Perfect. I'm an easy laugher if it's funny. Okay. I'll say that. Hey, I like that better. Yeah, I easy am. laugher when it's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's great. <laughs> and uh, who are some of your fabulous clients? So. They're all fabulous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so who do we have? Do you want to tra- uh, try to name who my fabulous clients are? Let's do it. <laughs> Chris Fairbanks. You got it. Gareth Reynolds. Mm-hmm. Sarah June. Yes. Who we saw at Roast Battle. Sure did. Destroyed. Oh, my God. So funny. So funny. And Phoebe Bottoms. Mm-hmm. Megan Keister. Yes. Bottoms and Keister. Bottoms and Keister. They love that joke. Do they really? No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I don't think so. All right. um, they've heard it. Though. I think they're indifferent. Right. Yeah. I they, think it's great. It's one of my favorite yeah. things. You let them have wins, they let you have wins. That's right. <laughs> uh, Matt McCarthy. Yes. Ryan Singer. Yes. Ramin Nazer, who did the podcast art for this podcast. Oh, yeah, that's Shout right. Shout out to Ramin. Amazing. Amazing job. Amazing. Did I miss anyone? You did, but you're doing amazing. Gareth Reynolds, did I do them? Gareth Reynolds. Three more. I got all the women, right? You did. Three more? Yeah. <laughs> no, there's 11. Paul Danke? Yes. Can you give me a hint? James Fritz. James Fritz, that's a pretty good hint. <laughs> uh, Another one is in Canada. So I don't know if you've met him. That's Nick Flanagan. Nick Flanagan. Have yes. not met him. Wouldn't have got that. Well, that's that's a quite the roster. I love my little roster. Yeah, and it feels like it's uh, very nicely curated, too. Thank you. I feel that. Yeah, I feel it. Yeah, yeah. Because we together did some co-produced events at the Comedy Bunker where they were... Which were so fun. So fun. Avail and Friends, which is... An, Avail is the name of your company. Comedy company. Yes. So we did Avail and Friends at the Comedy Bunker where we had... Avail and friends, so mostly Avail mm-hmm. and some other special guests like Rory Scovel, who yes. was amazing. Yes. Uh, we had Brent Weinbach. Weinbach. And, and Paul Danke was a special friend when he did the show because we weren't a fish. At oh, the time. yeah. I don't think anyone's going to backdate and, <laughs> and deny his JFL yeah. because of this. That would be some serious. Our one listener is not going to be like, oh, wait, hold on. Timeline. <laughs> Yes. They're going to go all like <laughs> Avengers Endgame and figure out who said what. Totally. <laughs> he's, Amazing. He's banned from JFL because of the It's Show yes. Business podcast. <laughs> oh, my God. He might be banned because we talked about him just for being on this tiny <laughs> podcast, but not for a timeline. Well, that's great. He has a good man. You got to look out for your interests. Yes. This is a good example yes. of how you're supposed to manage. That's right. Thank and you. And we're both Canadian. We are. But don't know each other from Vancouver, which is Strangely. amazing. Because we're almost, we're in the same age range yeah. and we should know the same people, but no. We don't. None. And Vancouver's small. Tiny. That's not like Los Angeles not knowing each other. It's like, well, I guess it's like two people in Santa Monica. Yeah. Not knowing each other. <laughs> yeah. But you spent how many years there? I was raised there and lived there until 2008. So. Okay. I was raised there and lived there till 2003. Yeah. Huh. So I guess there's a good chunk of like formative. Since yeah, we didn't the go to 20s. S- same high school. What high school did you go to? I went to Earl Marriott Secondary in White Rock, which uh, is outside would, okay, of Vancouver. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly, guys. Uh, she's not from not Vancouver. Not from Vancouver. <laughs> she's the from <laughs> she's from the Rancho Cucamonga <laughs> of Vancouver. It's true. Okay, it's true. <laughs> it's pretty. Okay. <laughs> my grand my parents are from Vancouver. Oh, okay. They went to the Burb to have me. Okay. Beautiful burp, though. Beautiful burp, beautiful On the burp. Ocean. Well, that makes sense. That's why we don't know each other. And so you came to Los Angeles to manage the talents? I did not. What? I came to Los Angeles to leave the movie industry. I used to... Do tell. I used to work in wardrobe. What? Yeah. Wardrobe? <laughs> yes. The onion. Yes. The so, on- many layers. so many layers. So many layers. And... Uh, 
I was getting really burnt out. Yeah. And uh, having a really hard time saying no to the work, the golden handcuffs of all of that, the 16-hour days, the nice paycheck, but exhausting. And uh, I wanted to leave Vancouver, and I was going to go to London. Oh. Family there. I love it there. I love London. Love it. But then the weather. And I was like, that is a lateral, rainy move. It's a lateral with slightly down. It's more rain. More rain, but better city. More rain, better city, and aggressive rain. Aggressive it's rain. A different kind of. It's awful. Yeah, but I could only live in New York, LA, or London. Agreed. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Right? I don't think I could live in New York. I could absolutely. And I, I used to live in New York, and I'm not done with it. I, Somewhere I'm going to be back. I don't have it. I don't understand how to grocery shop there. I am like. You don't a, need to grocery shop there. <laughs> That's true. I don't. You cook. just grab what you need on the way. You don't cook. Uh uh-uh. uh Perfect city for you. <laughs> Get a ticket. Let's go. I don't have I don't have the rhythm. I find the subways scary and stressful. Mm-hmm. They're always broken and on fire. Like why don't people talk about that there's like announcements that like that subway's closed due to a fire. That is not okay. Well stuff on the people throw garbage on the tracks and the the train runs over and it catches That's fire. That's terrible. But it's not like a blaze. It's like a it small It sounds fire. like a blaze. It sounds scary. It sounds so scary. It's a lot of city. And it's very like I feel way lonelier there with that many people. It's so big it, and isolating. It is strangely lonely. Like when you go back to your apartment by yourself, yeah, it's weird. I don't like it. And you much. have all this energy. Yeah. And like, but you're like, where do I go? And you just leave your house kind of. Yeah. I don't like it. But great comedy town. Great comedy town. Did a week there. My first comedy week in New York. So fun. I love that. Amazing shows. It was the. And did you get to hop to like many shows every night? Yeah. Like usually so two fun. a night. Oh my and, god! And uh, it was fantastic. That but is awesome. The uh, New York Comedy Club, which was so fun, and a bunch of others, and it made me want to move back. And I stayed in my old apartment where I used to live with a friend of mine. So she fun. still has it, and um, it was so great. So I was great. gonna go on Saturday for three nights. Really? This? this yeah. Why? What? What? Change your mind? Uh, my free place to stay fell through, and there's not uh, really a reason to go, so it made it like less. Was it, there's no reason to go. My friends are doing a show at the Bell House. Okay. Um, and then I was just like, oh, I, and I could meet, you know, some people while I'm there. Right. Do some showbiz. Showbiz. Meet with some agents that are on that coast. Agents. That kind of thing. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But no. I don't know. You still might go. I still might I go. I see it in your eyes. <laughs> What's great about last minute trips to New York, there's a lot of them. Yes. They're not that expensive. They're not that expensive. Sometimes you're only paying like $100 more if you would have planned. I know. Yeah. So I just got a text with a potential place to stay. Hey. Maybe I'll go. I don't know. Maybe you'll go. Where are they perform? Oh, Bell House on Saturday? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which client? Not a client. Just friends. Oh, that's code word for potential clients. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Open the roster. Number 12. It's not. Coming that. in. It's totally no? not. No. no. That's like when a girl says, oh, I'm not, de- I, I'm not interested in it. We're just... <laughs> Yeah, it's we a, just he just spent the night and we didn't do anything. It's my friend Mike who does that uh, major entertainer okay. that we produce that show at Dynasty together. Oh yeah, uh, and Greg who is Neil Hamburger. Oh nice, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah it's oh, fun. so fun, so fun. Yeah, That's I, a fun I, show. I think you should go. Interesting. Yeah, I have enough miles. Just go on Delta. Fucking Alaska. Alaska? <laughs> yeah. That's a real Canadian move <laughs> to have your Canadian move. <laughs> miles in Alaska. I can't switch now. It's like yeah, it's decades in. Yeah. I'm Delta. And Virgin bought them. Did that help? I don't know. You, got, <laughs> you can uh, fly to San Francisco now? There's other things. Eh. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's my credit card. Oh, uh, that's how you build up miles. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And so are you happy in Los Angeles? I love it. You love it. I love Los Angeles. And what does like a day-to-day for a talent manager look like? You wake up and? I wake up and I sit in front of my computer and go through emails and texts. And what's like the balance between like reactive and active? Like reactive being email, text, calls versus like active planning. I would say it is 50-50, which feels okay. That feels good. So like yeah. four hours, let's say you have an eight hour day, which mm-hmm. I'm sure your days are like 20, but half the day, four hours you do emails, eat some lunch, four hours mm-hmm. you're doing like planning, 
working on special, which Chris has a special coming out, right? He sure does. So exciting. So exciting. Do you know what it's called? Can you say? He hasn't landed on a name yet. Okay. There's a few That's good a ones, good though. Name. <laughs> hasn't landed on a name yet. Yeah. It's a little long There's for a, search. He has a podcast called Do You Need a Ride with Karen Kilgariff? Yeah. And uh, they, there's a whole chunk of one of the episodes where they, they talk about calling it spitballing because he's, you can see spit in some of it, which I didn't even notice, but he noticed and okay. spitballing and a balling with a W, like crying. That's funny. Oh, spitballing. Yeah. Oh, I like it. <laughs> yeah. I like it too. I spent so many years in working in hip hop that my first went to like spitballing, like oh. money. Oh. Yeah. Tight. Yeah, <laughs> tight. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he has a big skateboarder background, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I used to skate all the time. I love skateboarding. And he got his hip replaced. Now he can skate again. That's so scary. I know. <laughs> I can't, like, that kind of stuff freaks me out. I yeah. got a root canal and I'm still mad about it. Like, it's awful. It's awful. I've never had a surgery. Never? Never. Any, like, I've had stitches? my wisdom teeth out. That's a surgery. True. I had actually I had stitches. Did you have a uh, broken bones? No, I've never broken a bone. I fell on my face though. Okay. Um, when I worked in wardrobe, when it was getting near the end, uh, I was carrying above my head a ton of heavy wardrobe, mm-hmm. and I tripped on the steps up to the trailer. And I, my instinct was to protect the wardrobe. And so I. Oh, what an employee. (laughs) Right? Save the dress. Save the dress. And I fell face first onto pavement. And so I got taken out on the We got a lot of uh, good titles out of that. Save the dress. dress. Face first on the pavement. (laughs) Yes. So bad. Uh, So can you see that scar? Not at all. Oh, good. Yeah. My teeth went through and, and I was oh. blonde at the time. And so I had like pink hair from all the blood. It was terrible. Oh my God. It was bad. So this is, this is serious. It was bad. Oh my God. Yeah. That was a show for MTV called Kaya. Kaya. Well, uh, <laughs> you yeah. uh, made sure that they stayed, uh, <laughs> <Relevant>. you saved, <laughs> no one's heard of this show. 12 years later. <laughs> yeah. You lost your lip. Yeah. They wrote off the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I'm sure you get approached by young comics, maybe, or all types of comics being mm-hmm. like, hey, uh, I, want, I need a manager. Yeah. When when there was, uh, I'm not going to talk over you. What was your question about no, that? No, that's, there was. Just that. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, when I just had the first two, I was like, I'm good with two. Like, I am good with two. That is, I am capped. Right. And that has been kitchen's it. closed. The kitchen's closed. Two is perfect. two children, one boy, one girl. <laughs> That's done. Right. Totally. And then, and I really meant it. And then it was like being approached when it's someone that is a fit. Um, it's pretty. Yeah, the the room in your heart opens. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's really what's happened with every one of them. I've never been in a I'm scouting or I'm looking for more it's I've been closed every step of the way and then when it really is a fit it works yeah and there's room and what do you say to uh, people who are like oh if I only had a manager I would be at x do you feel that that's a true statement no I do not tell us why um because I feel that <laughs> there is there's only so much that a manager like can do. It would be nice if we could wave a magic wand and like make dreams happen. It's just not how it works. So if people are like, I'm funny, I'm funnier than this guy. If I only had a manager, I would have new faces or I would have that. Yeah, like it may open doors easier, faster, for sure. Like mm-hmm. there is like having representation does make a difference of being seen, but we like they're, they're really, it still can only do so much. Right. Um, without representation, it can be next to impossible to get some things, but mm-hmm. it just like, it isn't like the quick, it's fix. not a quick fix. No. So it's, a, it's an important stepping stone. Yeah. And how sh- do you feel there's a lot of truth to the statement that people say, hey, like when you're ready, like you'll just have a manager, like people will start approaching yes. you and you'll, yes. like the time will be right? Yes. So it's just a lot of it's serendipitous in a way. It, it really is. I don't, um, I think I'm, a, I'm not the norm. Like I, as far as scouting, mm-hmm. like they're probably sending people and like assistants and stuff to 
cover shows and right. I'm not that like I already knew because I was going to shows forever without the intention of working with I kind of knew who I liked right I already had like my taste was really clear and that's also really important for me I I only want to represent people that I really love what they're doing. Yeah. So there could be someone else that's like, I'm sure they will make millions of dollars, but I don't like what they're doing. Right. I'm not. That's not you. It's not me. But they'll be found. Yeah, someone finds them or they probably already have representation. 100%. People chase the dollars to a certain extent. Totally. Totally. But comedy is small enough where, and the management, the managers are probably all know each other. Totally. And so you kind of know everyone. You know everyone. Who's like comic manager, everyone who's yeah. got heat behind them and like totally. who's really working and killing it. And and all the managers that I know, like someone mentioned to me, like, what about repping this person? I was like, they're not for me, right. but, and then like I mentioned it to my manager friends, yeah. like that is happening. That happens a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. So it's a lot of like what. Jamie always says, "Just like, just be cool, have a good attitude, be undeniable, be undeniable." Oh, uh, there you <laughs> nailed it. Cats? Be undeniable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true though. Yeah, it really is. So working on your craft is always better than spending your time worrying about what you don't have on totally. the business side. Totally, truly. And do you enjoy the business aspect of running a management company? It is. Uh, do I enjoy it? Or what's your approach to it? <laughs> Because, I mean, let's, let's let's break it down. So yeah. you have 12 clients, right? 11. 11 clients. Mm-hmm. Special number. Plus the new one in New York. And <laughs> let's call it 10 to make it an easy number. Pretend you have 10 clients, right? <laughs> None One's of you decide dropped. who's oh being God. left out. <laughs> no, no names. <laughs> no names. Just so we can do, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, 10 numbers. Yeah. 100 divided by 10, right? Great. So you're not spending 10% of your time on each one, right? Right. There's going to be ebbs and flows. Yes. This month you need to spend more on this one. Totally. This, and it's you're holding essentially lottery tickets in yeah. these names. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you're investing more than you're receiving. Yes. So you're kind of, uh, you know, planting the seeds. Yeah. And then at some point you'll reap those seeds. And ideally there's some sort of uh, balance. Yes. Uh, in terms of income. But yeah. I'd imagine it's also, from your perspective, a quite lumpy business in terms of cash flows. Like yes. all this might come in this month and then the three months are doing that. So yes. there's some cash management, I'm sure. There's totally. Some, planning and also you in a way are tied to you have in some ways I'm sure the same insecurity that some of the artists have yes right yeah and it it is part of the um you know the pros and cons of being independent or being with a big management company I have all the freedom to work with who I want to work with I have the freedom of my time that um which I love like I love the amount of freedom it affords freedom for anything yeah Except for the security right. of a paycheck. Yeah. Like there is that, that um, just being on salary somewhere and not, like I don't make money if my clients don't make money. Right. Which is... Which is good because your interests are aligned. Yes, but it's, totally. But if it's scary for them, it's scary for you. That's if right. If it's great for them, it's great for you. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm really invested. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. And to essentially have like one... If you're getting 10% mm-hmm. of one artist, mm-hmm. it takes, you know, assuming they all make the same amount of money, 10 artists, you have one whole person. That's right. Right. That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> is that why you stopped it? That's right. <laughs> so you have 1.1 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1 humans. Is who, exactly. <laughs> right. But that's why the management business, ideally, when you scale it to its uh, maximum, there's mm-hmm. so many clients because you need to spread all these bets. Yes. That's also why people tend to sign people who are already making money. Yeah. Cause you're like, okay, I can, it's going to make X already. And if I build it to Y, it'll be this. And you can really like put a number on it. And that's what I got clear with right now. It's interesting. Like the different phases I was talking with an agent yesterday and, um, we were talking about who we both represent and she was like, w- are you, would you sign anyone else? And I just said, if they're earning, sure. Yeah. <laughs> like that right now where I'm at right, with my right, bandwidth, right. like if, if that was already a thing and it wasn't a building, I'm open. Like right. that's, yeah. Yeah. Cause you need, you need a certain amount of, uh, new, a certain amount of yeah. like middle and a certain amount of established. Yeah. If you have a roster full of new. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it just slow. It's it's just a longer yeah longer payout period yeah, yeah totally you, you gotta wait a little longer yeah that's right <laughs> and then so um, what are some of the 
if you had a new client come to you, a new comic, you really believe in them. Mm -hmm. They're number 12. You sign them. They're making waves. But they're like, hey, Jessica, uh, I don't know how I'm going to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. What would you encourage them to do? Uh that's in, you know that no one has really asked me that. That's why we're here. Yeah, it depends on the person. Like, if I am all for having a day job mm -hmm. and to like give yourself the room to like really do what you love and put time into your craft and do like if you can like if you can have the kind of day job in those scary times yeah. to float this, I think is my direction rather than putting on so much fucking pressure right. on like this has to work and just sucking the joy and the life and the creativity out of it. Right. So that's... Yeah, you take care of your personal needs and you have the freedom to be a bit more creative. Yeah. Yeah. If you can find the right job. Yeah. Yeah. Because there are no guarantees. Like there... Are the, that conversation yesterday we were talking about things that were just like, oh, these are no brainers. Like this will sell. Right. This project is so amazing. How could it not? Right. And then we get surprised all the time. Yeah. <laughs> like there's just not a, there's no guarantee. No guarantees. What do you feel are the uh, revenue streams for, we talked about a beginning artist, but what are like a middle or high level artist? I think it's, it's acting, mm -hmm. it's writing, it's developing your own stuff. There is podcasts, which... I know there's a billion, but uh -huh. like it, that's, that is available as a revenue stream. Right. It's, a, it's a slow build. Yeah. Unless you're totally. already established name. Totally. Yeah. And then, you know, there's touring. Right. But that like, you know, the regular clubs are booking people with acting credits that already are established like that. Right. So there's Draws. only, yeah, yeah, totally. And do you feel that the clubs around the country are now, instead of just booking some, middle and headliner from out of town who their local audience might not know because he has some TV credit that they're instead just booking locals who are really good? I feel like they are, you know, basically dealing with like a handful of the personal appearance agents and like that's who's in the mix. Right. Like, yeah. That's who gets those slots? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And then how do you deal with audience building for your clients? Is that a con act of conversation? Is that something yeah. that they're generally aware of or something you kind of push them into? And that's something that I'm, uh, my own work is like learning more about like how to maximize on social media. Right. Like just really the same way we're so clear, like uh, to have a successful podcast, release it the same day every week. Right. Like how to set up those same things in social media. Yeah. Like have hashtag content. It's so annoying saying yeah, content, I, but... <laughs> I really <laughs> thought the word content was going to go away, but what happened is there's, there's just a limitless appetite there and there's is. so many pipes for content yes. and it's, yeah, it's an interesting word, but it's not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And it like, it strangely matters to clubs, like social media, for following, sure, yeah. like things like that. Yeah. When you're booking someone, the first thing you do is like, you look at their socials or yeah. even for indications of like what they've done, yeah. et cetera. Totally. And, um, in acting, they always talk about like making sure your brand is uniform. So mm -hmm. like, hey, like your headshots match your uh, social media profile, which match you. Yes. So like you don't like throw them off. Yes. So and a lot of life is just turning into casting. Totally. So it's like they want to cast this comedian, even if they're technically casting for uh, one night. Yes. Here's the lineup. I want this person. Yep. So like all touch points yeah. of where you get interacted with need to be somewhat uniform. Yeah. And like that is so much of, um, just getting all of your assets together. Like it is, I see a lot of comics that will have like really old tape online. Right, yeah. And it's like, they don't know that you are killing it and current. If that's just not there to see if they Google right. your name and the first thing, just like, don't give, um, roadblocks for them. Right, exactly. No roadblocks. No That's roadblocks. a great way to look at it. Yeah. No roadblocks. I don't give them an excuse. Everyone's just looking for an excuse to, to say no. Totally. Yeah. And at the same time, everyone wants to say yes. Right, yeah. G give <laughs> like them an excuse to say yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like a casting director is really hoping that you kill it. Yeah, like, so that they can move on and yes. go to lunch or whatever. <laughs> totally. <laughs> sure, they work hard, but yeah. they, they do work hard. And they do. Yeah, they want to find. And someone told me something interesting about casting directors is that, like, 
if there is a roadblock or something else, they know they can find exactly what they're looking for. Yes, exactly. So Moving it's like if, if there's some reason where it's not fitting, they're not going to be like take a chance. They're no. just going to be like, uh, it's all right, next. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, in terms of content, like what do you, what's your management take on a lot of the comedians that are clipping and um, captioning a, a lot of stuff online? I think it's great. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. It is fun. Yeah. And would you encourage new comedians to do it as well? Or is it, do you feel it's like you kind of need to have enough material where you wouldn't burn certain stuff or? I would say if you believe in it, do it. I don't like, that is a question that I have. It feels like the whole burning material feels like it's changing. It feels like it's a dying thing to worry about. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, It's kind of like what Seinfeld says. Like you can't be all over the internet. Yeah. So whatever you put out, like it's just going to get pushed down anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I like it. I think it's especially like, um, yeah, I just think it is another good way to just have your voice heard. It's clear, it's fast. And in that same way of like, um, if it is a good little clip, really quickly someone can hook in of like, oh, I like this person. Like right. new people getting introduced and in. Yeah. If it's not great and you don't believe in it, maybe don't. Maybe don't, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like all of your... It's another piece of art you can craft. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to start setting up two cameras at the Comedy Bunker. Oh. We're creating a new background, and we're going to have that kind of running. Amazing. So, so we can start clipping stuff and oh, giving people... Oh, that's so awesome. Because yeah. right now, you, we still run a tape right now, but it's very basic. Yeah. So we're looking into What camera are you going to get? That's actually what I'm waiting for. So uh, my friend, comedian friend, Michael Blaustein, is uh, look, talking to his friend who works with Schultz to see if... Uh, kind of what they use and Amazing. get some recommendations. I feel like it's going to be two DSLRs, like the basically cameras, but they cap out at 30 minutes each, mm-hmm. which sucks. It's just a stupid technical limitation for import export rules. And so I, I'd rather have two where I could just set and don't have to go back because the show's like an hour and a half and I don't want to be like no. on offing them. No, it's the worst. Maybe I can get a little remote to do it. I don't know. Well, that's what I, I have a DSLR and mine caps out at 14 minutes. It's so, so annoying. annoying. Yeah. And I've been wondering just as um, a manager, it'd be really handy to have a good camera. But it's another thing to invest. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I've gotten good tapes from flappers too, and they run a camera. Yeah. It's like some sort of camcorder that's just always running. Interesting. And it's like pretty low light in there, but they have really strong technical stuff. Yeah. Their sound is always great and they're... Tapes are always great. Yeah. So I don't know. We're going to figure that out, but I think it's going to be important to do that. It's That's always awesome. fun when you start seeing like the Comedy Bunker logos on people's it's profile. It's so great. You scroll through comedians on the uh, Facebook and you're like, one out of like 10 is like. And that's a great example. Like Troy and Adrian out. both take amazing photos. Yeah, yeah. And like it's, it's so, it makes such a difference. I don't know if people would use that if they were shitty photos. Yeah, like, people love good photos. They love good photos. Yeah. Everything's yeah. cool, black and white. Yeah, yeah. And it's like a little, it's become a good show. So people want to be like, I've I've done it, you know? So it's like, hey, I can use it and maybe I'll get on something else. Who knows? No, it's perfect. It's a great show, great photo. Great show, great photo. Yeah, so good. Great food. (laughs) Great snacks. Shout out to Maddie Chimber who did the barbecue. (laughs) Were you there for that one? I wasn't. Oh, he did. uh, He has this great podcast, Cooking with Maddie, where he does like all these like fun videos of him cooking. And he did full barbecue chicken tacos and overnight. Oh my Some God. sort of pork tacos. Amazing. It was amazing. I don't eat pork, but... Uh, Me neither. Everyone said it was amazing. <laughs> I love and, it. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it was so fun. It's a, it's a nice little thing to do. So I've, I've been struggling if we should keep it weekly or go semi-monthly just for my sanity, but we'll see. It's such a fun show. So fun. And we're co-producing a couple, right? On yes. The, on September 20th. Yes. Who do we have? Mark Norman. Mm-hmm. Fahim Anwar. Yes. Who else? Paige Weldon. Paige Weldon. Simon Simon Gibson. Gibson. Yeah. And surprise guest. Yes. So fun. And October 30th too, right? Yeah. Chris Fairbanks. Chris Fairbanks. I think that's it. Is that it? Is uh, our mystery guest confirmed? Oh, is he? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, We'll get back to you on that. (laughs) It's a long ways away, but it's going to be a Halloween show. Yeah. So people are going to dress up. So fun. So we should get people who want to like do a lot of riffing too, because they're going to, it's going to be a... Fun, a good one. fun thing. That's a good one. They're going to show up in their costumes. and It's it. already a good room to do a lot of crowd work. 
That's so fun. Uh, so that'll be fun. Are you going to dress up? That's a good question. I didn't even think about that. I have to dress up. <laughs> Find a costume. <laughs> are you, are you going to dress up? Maybe I will. I haven't the past couple of years. I have two standard costumes, Che Guevara, which is basically just... <laughs> put a hat on. It's just I put a hat on. <laughs> and then I have Han Solo, which is just like... Oh, not Han Solo. What was it? No, um, his other role, Indiana Jones, which is also a hat. That's funny. <laughs> and a whip, so... That's fun. Yeah. I don't... Chris Fairbanks is a great cost- Halloween costume person. Oh, really? Yeah. So he'll be, he'll be dressed up. I can't guarantee that. Yeah, but I think it might does, be weird if all the, I don't know if you're a comedian. I don't feel like you should have to dress up. You can if you want. It's because it kind of takes you out of it. Because with comedy, anything that's on stage distracting you from the comedy, it's like you know, I've seen Chris do stand up in a helmet. Pretty fun. In a helmet? <laughs> what kind of helmet? A real? What? I think he was um, Evil Knievel. Is that what he dressed up as? It was fun. Like Super Dave, kind of. Yeah, or like a. Motorcycle helmet. Oh my god! It's fun. I gotta see that. All right. Well, Chris, Chris, if you're listening, which you're not, uh, please dress up. I don't know many comics that listen to podcasts. No, I think some do. I mean, they'll listen to Rogan and the big ones. And bless you. Thank you. One more. Bless you again. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, usually they're creating podcasts. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. But Fair. you know, I like listening to Rogan and a few other ones. Do that you are, really? They're fun. I've yeah. never listened. Never? Never. Oh my god, it's so fun. Interesting. When there's a good guest, he's a great interviewer and you know, I love the like behind the scenes comedy talk too. Yeah. That's yeah. so interesting. Yeah, Fahim just had a really good one. Hmm. Uh, They're long, right? Yeah, it's it's over 2 hours usually. That's long. So, it's not like a focused listen. It's like, oh, you're at the gym, it's in the car. Yeah. I mean, I listen to podcasts mostly instead of music now. I know. Yeah. I just got back into music after like 10 years off. It's amazing. <laughs> I know. It's so weird. So <laughs> what do you, uh, do you guys ever have retirement conversations with some of your? Never. <laughs> Are they, uh, they're all too young. They don't ever worry about it. I'm sure they all worry about it. Yeah. It is a crazy thing. Yeah. yeah. I've just started thinking about it. I guess it's also, it bleeds over into personal management, which you probably, I mean, you can't necessarily give them financial advice, yeah, et cetera. Totally. But it is an interesting thing. It's because a lot of them are contractors, right? Mm-hmm. So it's really up to them to set up like some sort of SAP IRA or something yeah. and save or not save, I guess. Yeah, it's it's an interesting... It's a weird part of this town where it's like people just feel that always, okay, I'll be struggling, but then one day it'll just click and I'll have all this money. So that's my retirement is I'll yeah. make it, you know? Yeah, it's a, it's a weird yeah. thing. Yeah. And you can also save up all this money, then die. I know. Yeah. That's what's hard for me, putting... I've just, like, five years ago maybe started putting money into retirement. Yeah. I don't like it. Give me that money. But it's still your money. Mm, doesn't feel like it. Doesn't? No. It feels it, locked up. Especially if you put it in and you save the taxes on it, you get the government's paying you to save. I know. It's got to do feels it. feels like a scam. It's not a scam. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized before as a Canadian, my retirement plan before was just die in Canada or get old in Canada. And I felt like I'd be taken care of. Uh, but not it's anymore. not. It's not true anymore. It's not really ever true. But yeah. yeah. I mean. But I feel way less here. Like I less. feel like no one. Oh, it's, this is America. You got to yeah. look out for your own. Yeah. I mean, the thing about a lot of things is that when it comes to saving is it's really hard to get rich instantly, but not hard over time. Mm-hmm. So if you're just putting away, like if you're just doing your five, $6,000 mm-hmm. a month or a year, sorry for mm-hmm. the um, IRA. I mean, yeah. that's a, such a great start. Yeah. It feels good. If you're in a 20% tax bracket, that's a thousand bucks ish that their mm-hmm. government's giving you to save. Yeah, you know? that's true. And you can't do it. You can't catch, you can catch up when you're like in your fifties, just like a catch up payment you can make. But for now it's like, I'll be glad that I started later. You will never regret it. I'll never regret it. You won't. Whatever you would have spent the money on will be long gone. I know. It's so true. That's what's so scary about it. I mean, if you're 100% hand to mouth, it's hard, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like there's always something we could cut out on. Like, I spent six bucks at Starbucks today. I didn't need to do that. I saw how much I spent on food last month, and I need to change it. Yeah. (laughs) It's But also, like, think about your. So you're a one person operation, right? Yeah. So 
paying for food is this like you're just paying someone else to be your assistant. Yeah. Right. Yep. And an assistant would be more than paying for food. Oh, I like how you're you know, framing like, this. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I might be making you feel better, but it's also at some point you have to delegate. Yes. So are you going to delegate like right. your other stuff so you can make food? Right. I mean, no. delegating food is the first one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you're not eating it. Steak and lobster every night, right? No. It just adds up over time, right? It adds up, and a lot of it is meetings. meetings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, and that's business expense, yeah, too. It is. So you take the whatever yeah. your marginal tax rate off of that, and yeah, it doesn't feel good because like feel good, especially with food. You're like that money's just gone. I didn't, I didn't need to eat. What was that? I know, but you do need to eat. Yeah. yeah. What are the some things you would delegate? Like when you get an assistant, what would be the first thing they would do for you? Oh, that is Potential assistance. I know. Hey, if you're out there, if our one listener wants to be a comedy manager, <laughs> holler at Avail. Totally right. Right. A little intern? I know. I don't Did know why they have a- to be little. They could be any size. Well, and that's something I've debated because there is, um, it's hard to, like, one thing would just be, like, casting submissions. Like, that's just, like, hours in a day of, like... That would be the first thing that I would delegate. Can you explain what that is? So it's just going through breakdowns and seeing, um, you know, what casting directors, what roles, and then who you think would be good for that and pitching them to casting directors. Ah. Yeah. That seems like a really doable thing. Yeah, totally. And someone would love to do that. Someone would love to do that. Let's find you that person. Great. This is expanding your uh, yes. operation. Yeah. Yes, totally. And how many hours a week would that be? I wonder. I bet that would be... Maybe like 15 hours a week. So 15 hours a week. It's probably entry level. Mm-hmm. They would have to have good taste, right? Well, that, that like, and I would have to oversee. Right. Like, that's a, yeah. But you could, you would have to create a system yeah, where it's like, totally. hey, you've already kind of looked over these ones. Yeah. Look at the roster and just send it back to me with what, what your recommendation, two or three for each. Yeah. And you can be yes, no, yes, no, yes, yep. no. Totally. And, then send and it I would off. lay out, like, here's what you say. Right. Yeah. Call these ones, email these ones, like just all, yeah. all that. Yeah, yeah. It feels good just talking about it, it doesn't does. it? It yeah. does. 15 hours a week saved. Oh, my God. Now you can cook your own eggs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. It's so true. Have you ever thought about um, investing in any stocks or anything over your life or been no. like, oh, I wish I bought Apple or it just never really crossed your mind? It's overwhelming. Overwhelming? Yeah. Yeah. It is... Uh, yeah. I like I if I don't understand something, then I get like I just don't I don't want to learn. Right. <laughs> and so I hear stocks, I'm like, I don't understand how that works. Do you understand real estate? Yes. Yeah, see there's usually a clear divide between stock people and real estate yeah. people. Yeah. 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 And so you were a homeowner, right? I was You was, yeah. <laughs> and you know, so that, that's what, what that's also forced savings, right? Yeah. And that's some security I'm letting go of. For sure. But you know, if you're transitioning to a different area, you have the freedom to move now. Yeah. But over time, when you had the house, saved money, I'm sure it appreciated. Truly. And like, yeah. An apartment wouldn't have done that. No. So I'm sure you'll be an owner again one day. Yeah, and I think so. That'll be part of your retirement. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Like most Los Angelinos, it's yes. their home, right? <laughs> That's the crazy thing about LA is like you can get frozen out of it. Mm hmm. And uh, I don't know anything about your personal situation, but. If you sold the house, there's mm-hmm. a certain amount of time where, I believe it's a year, where if you buy something else, you don't have to pay taxes on the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it, like a 1031 exchange or something hey! like that? Hey! I believe you're right. <laughs> right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You're probably thinking about that yeah, in yeah, the yeah. back of your mind, hopefully. Yeah. You don't want to hand up a big check over to the government. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. wild. Yeah. yeah, it's weird stuff. Totally. And then have you ever thought about raising capital for your company? Being like, hey, like an investor to... I, or would that even help? I don't. That's what I don't know. Right. And I'm trying to decide. There is um, I'm trying to make the decision, which I think I know the answer to. But there is a uh, there's another manager who I really love. Um, we get along really well, and not partnering, but sharing space together. Um, sharing overhead. Exactly. Right. And that is I'm, you know, can I afford it? It's like. I can't on paper. Right. 
but can I, in the bigger picture, like, can I afford not to? Like, hey. I really, um, I'm really tired of sitting alone in my room working. Yeah. I'm very collaborative. Right. My ideas flow so much better talking them out with someone else. Uh-huh. So that, that's what my next decision is. Before Maybe. an assistant, it's Space. do I want and a person. Maybe instead of Soho. I, well, that's it. I'd let go of my... You did? I would. Yeah, you would. Yeah. 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 It's probably worn off the sexiness of it. It has. Yeah. <laughs> it's far. Now it's just $12 coffees and $15 yes. parking. Totally. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but that view... Great view. The view is nice. But yeah. office, every day, your own space. I know. I know. And it's, it's a nice space. Yeah. What part of town? Close to you. Like me right now? Yeah. Hey. Yeah. One more edit at... Yeah. (laughs) That's great. I know. It's so great. Yeah. Yeah. And she's awesome. And I love her clients. Like there's... Oh, perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. So fun. Yeah. I think it'd be good for me in the way that it would be good for everyone that I work with. Should we talk about some of our projects coming up? So it forces us to do them now we're on the record? Yes. New York comedy thing? Yes. That probably is not going to happen. Probably not going to happen. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> One more but, for next, uh, but why don't we go? Let's go. When is it? It is in November. November what? I don't know. Off the top of my... Okay, we'll buy tickets. Let's buy tickets. Let's buy tickets. Um, let's, for, let's for sure go. Okay, so we're going to go to New York Comedy Festival? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so here's... Um, I just picked up my phone. Hey. Just seven texts. Nobody cares. No one cares. Uh, just making sure, but see, that's what happens. I look at my phone. Right, yeah, I have to do a client check. Yeah, we'll check in after, and then. Um, <laughs> Great. W- the other project we're going to do was the Atlanta, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. Have we made any progress since we last talked? No. Have, have we talked about it since? No. <laughs> <laughs> where is that at? In Atlanta. No, but where? <laughs> where are we at with it? Nowhere. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so there's an unknown on. You know, we want to go to Atlanta. Uh, third edit is that <laughs> forty-two. <laughs> Shit. Uh, yeah. So really, our only for sure project is September twentieth. We have an amazing show. Yeah, and we would like to do shows outside of LA and get into producing some yeah. shows in different places. That'd be so fun. It'd be really fun. Yeah, non-traditional venues or maybe traditional venues. Yeah. Into it, yeah. What? Do you, how do you deal with like your clients who come to you and be like, "Hey, I want to get more spots at like the improv or comedy store," or does that ever happen? It does. I mean, the comedy store. It's go hang out. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. Still that. Still that. Um. And then, yeah, it's it's hard. It is. Uh, you know, there are a lot of comics. Mm-hmm. It's not a meritocracy. It's, yeah. Um, it is and it isn't. True. Yeah. That's kind of weird. It is and it isn't. Some of it's meritocracy, some of it's not. Yeah, some like they need to sell tickets. Intangible, yeah. And it's draw. It's draw. Yeah. And, you know, the time I spent at Dynasty, like just really seeing it's draw. And it's also just like who's in front of your face, which does not mean show up and hound yeah. the booker no, at all. Never. That can go the opposite way. Worst, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's a weird one. Yeah. Like, it really, like, that is why that job is so hard. It was hard. interesting, like, watching, like, when Dynasty started, like, how many submissions yeah. and how many people reach out. Yeah. And then how many are not really concerned about the economics of it. Yeah. Especially with it, like, that's a 200-seat theater. Yeah. I mean, if you're not planning to sell a hundred, yeah, it's not really going to work. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's really. And you know, one thing with Dynasty specifically, it's like I don't know if it is clear that there are very few shows that they are actually booking the talent for. Right. Like the majority. I think it's clearer are, now. Yeah. When it started, it seemed like oh, just another lineup of comedians. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It, like no, this is a different thing. Yeah. 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 So I'm sure, like, you have to emotionally manage your clients through that as well. Being like, hey, I want more spots at the improv. And you're like, yeah. And you kind of have to, like, talk them through a, some version of this conversation, which yeah. is like, okay, if you want to go here, you should probably hang out more. There, you know, like, you know, maybe also hang out more. Yeah. And then it's also, like, unknowns. 
Yeah. Yeah. And like, are you a draw? Can we work on that part of your yeah. aspect? Yeah. And it's also in like in LA, like just do, like, it's not going to do anything for you doing those. Edit that. <laughs> I mean, well, it's like doing one more show. Like say you're getting one spot a week, doing two spots a week is not going to change your career. Yeah. Doing three spots a week isn't going to change your career. If all the other things aren't, yeah, yeah, moving yeah, as well. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of like you're lighting these little fires. Like yeah. Light a fire underneath your podcast. Light a fire yes. by like showing up at the clubs. Yes. Light a fire by acting or writing or whatever whatever passion you think it is. Totally. Because uh, if you're not doing it from a multi pronged approach, like there's no one thing. And Paul Danke is someone that I see like goes up a lot more than a lot of people, and he like hosts two shows. Which ones? He hosts the Comedy Garage. Oh, the Comedy Garage. I've heard of that. So great. Never been. <laughs> it's a great, When's fun show. That It is uh, next Tuesday night. Okay, next Comedy Garage. We'll be there. I'll uh, be there. So fun. And Blam Blam Blam. Where's that? That is at uh, our bar in K-Town. Oh, yeah. Our bar. That's Never a been fun there. One. That one's Tuesday night. Okay, Blam Blam Blam. Um, and... Yeah, and, like, that is one way to just, like, you know, and, like, you, you get to, like, go up often because you run that show. Yeah, I mean, it's once a week if we run it once a week. and Yeah. Yeah, it's guaranteed stage time. It's, it's guaranteed great. stage time. I only do crowd work there, which is great to build that muscle. Totally. So fun. Totally. Yeah. So and it, fun. It also gives you the brain of being like, oh, okay, I get it, how hard it is to get people to a show. Yes, yeah. totally. Yeah. And then uh, I started... Doing a show at the Improv with That's Eddie right. Giuseppe, the um, Culture, Lab? Culture Lab, which so is fun. We're going to a second one, which is next Monday. That's so awesome. Fun. Yeah, and then a show with Andrew Delman at uh, Westside West Comedy Side. Theater called Tight Five. So great. Where we do ten minutes of new material, and then the comics leave, come back, put on a blazer, and then do their Tight Five. It sounds like a mess, but it's actually it was so fun and. Uh, and when I brought the blazers into the club, I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> this is stupid. Uh, I don't like, and then everyone was into it. So it was Moses Storm, Lori Kilmartin, so fun. Um, Daniel Webb, and it was just so fun. That's awesome. Yeah, it really worked out. I so, love that. Uh, I was just texting with Andrew to get our next date before this. So hopefully so great. it'll be soon in October. Amazing. Yeah. And then, yeah, you start to understand, like, oh, this club needs to sell drinks. This yeah. club needs to make ticket sales. and Totally. Like, like, it's not personal. It's no so one's not personal. It can be personal. But usually, <laughs> usually it's not. Yeah, usually They're not it's in not. the business. And they just want to, like, make sure that people are happy. It's a great show. Yeah. And that's what it is. And I'm sure they have some celebrity talent they have to, yeah. you know, massage and let in the club, et cetera. But totally. It's just a, everyone wants everyone to do well. It's, it's not so malicious. True. It's not. No. What is what's the premise for the Culture Lab show? Uh, just a diversity show. Great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Fun. It's good. It's fun. Yeah. The line has been good. We started with the Canadian show, which was oh uh, yeah the Canada Day show, and then does that count as diverse if you're Canadian? Um, I don't like where this conversation turned. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> is it count as diverse if you're Canadian? No. Not really. No, it doesn't. I guess the Canada shows. Kind of a non-diverse. Well, like, it was a diverse bunch of Canadians. Yeah, so great. They, yeah. So it wasn't just all white Canadians. Maybe they might have been all white. I don't know. I'm not white. I'm half white. Who knows I, what this is? Are you half white? Yeah. Hmm. English, Irish, Scottish on one side, Moroccan on the other. Interesting. Yeah. How about you? English, Scottish, Irish. Oh. Jewish. On the, so Half. <laughs> No, I thought I was half, and then I took a test that the uh, twenty-three and me. Okay, I'm in my twenties, twenty percent. Twenty percent. So, yeah. some. Do you know if it's your mom or dad? Mom. Oh, mom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're mix. I'm a mix. Oh, that's a good Canadian mix. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Would you ever move back to Canada? I would like to not. Like, I have my citizenship uh, uh, interview on the thirteenth. Hey. Yes. That's always fun. <gasps> Scary. It's not. It's like, what ocean's on the side of the U.S.? I Who's know. the president? Did you do it? Yeah. You're a citizen? I'm a citizen. Yeah, I want to I wanna get my citizenship and just be here. I, I, I don't miss Canada. I don't. I went back for the Vancouver for the first time in 12 years mm-hmm. for, during JFL Northwest and did some shows there, which was amazing. It was so fun. But I just realized, like, how much of a mountain town it is. It's such a mountain town. You're like... 
Ugh. Oh my god! Like it's Ugh. so small. Yeah. When you're there, you never like. You can like see it all. See it. It's all. tiny. It's so tiny. You can was, walk it. You can't walk it, but like I'm just driving wow. around. I'm like the downtown. I'm like Soccer West is still here. Like this is still here, and everyone's like, "Oh, you're not gonna recognize it. It's so different." And I'm like, "Yeah, there's like two new apartment buildings. Like everything else is the same." <laughs> It's, like, it's just packed now. Uh, yeah. It's a uh, bit more depressing. It's more depressing. Yeah. Like, it is more like, depressing. You can see like this weird depression on people's faces. And it's non-affordable. Unaffordable. Completely. Unaffordable. And I mean. And I, boring. I, I went no from. No Vancouver. Oh, uh, yeah. Edit six. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be this new name of the podcast. Just edit. Editing us <laughs> saying weird shit. Um, <laughs> but I went to my friend there who's an actor and I. Right from the airport. He's like, meet me at Starbucks. We hung out. I just walked up to him and grabbed him. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. And I'm like, because he's a dual citizen. I'm like, you need to just go. Like, what are you doing here? Like, you're an actor. You want, like, no. I know. Leave. You have to. That was the best advice I got when I was in music. It was just like, just go and it'll all work out. Yeah. Jump and the net will form. It's true. It's good advice. It really is. Interesting. The person who gave me that advice didn't do it. (laughs) That is funny. That's funny, right? What are they doing now? I don't know. But Dave Chappelle said that one time, I think in an interview. It might have been on Comedians in Cars, and we're talking about advice. And Dave's like, yeah, I got this great advice from this guy. Or someone said it. He was not a good comedian, but gave one piece of great advice. And it's weird how that can happen. Truly. Like someone can give you amazing advice, but like their life did not, they didn't follow the advice themselves. And they're pretty much a failure in all other aspects yeah. of their life, except for that one advice. What's that thing? Like truth is the truth, even if a liar says it. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. I, I love the, uh, <laughs> my version of that or not my version, a version of that is, uh, even the blind squirrel finds the acorn. <laughs> I love that. That's good, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. We would say that in music when like, uh, you know, someone managed to come up with like a one hit song and they can't do it again. You know, that is hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't work with comedy as much because it's like you might not find that acorn. I mean, you might have one <laughs> joke that's far better than the rest. Yeah, but I mean, you, I'd be hard pressed if someone fluked into like a good hour. Totally. You know. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You don't fluke into an hour. I was thinking about skateboarding and comedy. It's very similar. Like you have to just keep working on the trick. Yeah. Until you have it, and then one day you have it. Is skateboarding the same? Because I don't know it with the trick of like you can just change one little thing and then you can land it. Yeah. Oh, cool. Or you get better, or you're like you know you you work at it. Yeah. Yeah. You can change one approach, and it's individual. Yeah. You have to do it by yourself. Not a team sport. Not. I never liked team sports. I like me neither. Like martial arts. I liked skateboarding. I just realized I don't like any sports. I like swimming. Swimming. Kind of solo. Yeah. Unless you're doing. Synchronized? I could. This is where video would be good because you could see me. With arms. With, ar- with arms. Avec arms. Did you ever learn French in Canada? I, uh, up until grade nine. Yeah? That's where they stop in White Rock? That's where they stop in White Rock. Yeah. That's where they let you choose to stop. I wish I had stayed. Yeah. I, I went to France and I, the thing I used the most was uh, Je ne sais quoi qu'est-ce que tu dis. Yeah. Which is, I don't, I don't know, know what you're saying. saying. <laughs> she used it over and over. Yeah. 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 It's a good start. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's better than Je ne parle pas anglais. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't well, remember. What would they do that. then? Just say it louder? Or? I, th- I believe they would often just start then talking in English. Oh. Uh, because they would, you know, put the, put the effort on the other people. Yeah. I, I was a real American at heart. Oh. Uh-huh. Terrible. What's your experience been like with getting clients on, uh, in JFL? I have only tried once. And one got through to like the, the audition round, which is yeah, great. That's great. great. We'll see. And I try for um, some. Like, how was your trip to JFL this last year? I loved it. So fun. I had so much fun. As a manager, you found it useful. Why? Because it's kind of like comedy camp. Comedy camp. It's total comedy camp. Okay. It's like, it's a hang. Yeah. Um, wasn't there scouting? Wasn't there with any clients? It's it's really a fun uh, and like deepening of relationships where you're just like in emails with people all the time. Yeah. And, you know, you fly across the country to hang out with people that are in your city, but we're all isolated. Right. And not mingling. Yeah. It's kind of like everyone's more open. Yeah. 
Yeah. Having a good fun. time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we saw each other there two years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, two years ago. That's so crazy. Oh, no, one year ago. Two years. One. Oh, one year. But two JFLs ago. Two JFLs ago, yeah. one year ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so yeah. fun. Well, I think this has been great. Super fun. So fun. Yeah, thanks for doing it on the pod. Where can people find out more about Avail and your, your comedians? You can go to availcomedy.com. Availcomedy.com. And uh, come to the Comedy Bunker yes. live at... September 20th and October for a veil night and October 30th for so a veil night. And uh, we'll see you guys there. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. Bye. Bye.